visiting a distinguished visiting fellow, Steve Moore, and Veracruz Capital founder, Steve Cortez. Uh, good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Steve Moore, kick us off here. Your observations of the jobs report. Well, you know, uh, it's not 140,000 because you got to subtract out the, the losses from, you know, from the revisions downwards. So it's like 90,000. Wow. It's, it's a horrible report. The other thing that hasn't been mentioned yet, I'm just looking at this as <laughs> reading furiously as, as we've been talking. But, you know, the, the um, two other bad signals. One was the um, average uh, work week, Maria, fell. Bell. So people worked less hours, not more. The second one that was kind of disappointing, real disappointing, is that wa no wage growth. In fact, wages fell a little bit, very slightly, but that was after three months of wage gains. So we were hoping to see, Maria, a kind of tightness of the labor force that would allow p uh, workers to get higher wages. That doesn't appear uh, to be happening right now. Wow. Um, look, 90,000 jobs, that, we need 150 to 200,000 just to keep pace with the labor force participation. One last thing, Maria, the unemployment rate in this United in the United States is not 5.1%. That's the biggest lie statistic out there. What is we it? are closer we are closer to the U6 number which is 10% because so many people are dropping out of the workforce. I think everybody on the panel here would agree with that, but I think it's really interesting that you mentioned the average work week is lower. Bill, yep. I think we, we interrupted you earlier. Did you want to say something about fiscal policy? I I think, think, what can they, what is the Obama administration going to say about this? Well, why is it that they're not hiring because workers aren't productive. And why are workers not productive? They don't have the, the, the infrastructure. They don't have all of the things that are needed to get workers to be productive. We are not paying workers enough. Why? Because they're not productive. All of it comes back to productivity. And that's the key is where fiscal policy can be doing something, but they're not. Fiscal policy is frozen because of political impasse. And we've always talked about a trifecta of fiscal problems, high structural deficit, high debt to GDP ratios, yep. but a broken political process. But the system can take any two out of three, but when we have all three, we're dead. Yeah, we and, and we're dead as far as the eye can see. And now we have a looming issue with the debt crisis uh, and the debt ceiling and also the, the December debt ceiling. Is, the, is government really going to start having a shutdown problem <laughs> or even worse, a, a, uh, a debt ceiling problem where we get downgraded yet again because we can't pay our debts? No, and that's the problem. Yeah. The political solution, I, last I checked, the two front runners, their solution to this is to spend more. Trump and Sanders want to spend more, 18 trillion more. Slap that on top of your debt, you know, <laughs> debt ratio. But the, case, but the case is very good for spending more because we do have infrastructure that needs spending on. We don't need spending on a lot of things that we don't need spending on, and everyone kind of knows what those are. Yeah. Me, and so we in, need to shift the composition of spending. Let me bring in Steve Cortez because, like Keith McCullough, Steve Cortez has also been predicting a bit of a gloom and doom when it comes to the broader uh, economic story. Steve, how do you see it? Right, and I don't necessarily want to celebrate that, but by the way, if this is a recovery, uh, I hate to see the next recession uh, because this recovery is very tepid at best. And look, September uh, was a great song by Earth, Wind & Fire. It was a terrible month for markets, terrible month for the economy. Here's what's most worrisome, I think, is not just the U.S. in isolation, but, and I've said this before on the show, the U.S. in terms of global growth, because of the rest of the globe is in such deceleration mode, the U.S. has been like Atlas holding up global growth. Well, Atlas is clearly shrinking shrugging right now, and that is going to be a major problem. Investors need to be defensive here. I think the 10-year yield is headed, headed well below 2% and it's will stay there. It's already below 2%. You could think it goes much lower than this, huh? And yes, yes, yeah. much lower and will stay there. And I think in terms of stocks, you need to err to the defensive side. Staples, utilities, the kinds of things that can handle a low growth environment. L let me just add to yeah, that. Go ahead, Bill. Not, not only are, is the U.S. the only source of growth in the world and is tepid at that at 2%, but every policy in the world is trying to steal growth in the U.S. because they're trying to depreciate the exchange rate. Mm. Depreciating exchange rate doesn't make growth. No. It takes it from Absolutely someone else. Go ahead, and where, where is it going to take it from? The U.S. Steve, on that point, when you know, I've tried to you know, characterize this. Hold on. As a, a central planning okay. panic. You know, when they're trying to tell you that we're going to get growth and they don't get growth and they keep printing to Bill's point and all they do is perpetuate deflation instead of growth, are you, are you seeing the, the probability here rising of an all-time low in the 10-year bond yield? Yeah, Keith, I think absolutely. I think your point is spot on there. Markets are starting to really lose faith in central planning, whether it's central planning of uh, trying to steer industrial policy in Beijing or whether in Washington, yeah. D.C., uh, it's easy monetary policy. I think markets are starting to reach the limits of patience with central government planning. We need real underlying growth now. And by the way, the only way I see that happening, and, and there's been a lot of doom and gloom so far on this panel, I'll give you the, perhaps the good news, <laughs> the potential good news. I got some good news uh, at the end of the show also. 
Okay, I do Just believe saying. a Republican is going to win in 2016. I think if we ease up on taxes and even more importantly on regulation, mm. American innovation is far from dead. Uh, we can come back, but we need to get the government hurdles out of the way yeah. from entrepreneurial Which is capitalism why I see in America. More, all the GOP candidates right now are trying to talk that story up: lower regulation, lower taxes. Yeah. Look, I, as I look at the U.S. economy right now, I think there's way, way too much attention paid to monetary policy. Look, we have low inflation, low interest rates. That's a good thing. The, the, real, um, the real thing that's holding back the American economy right now is horrible fiscal policy. And by the way, I disagree. Look, if we have to have a fight to keep these budget caps, I mean, read my piece in the Wall Street Journal today. It's worth the fight. We can't allow continued slippage in terms of these uh, caps where Congress wants to spend $80, $100 billion over the caps. That's yeah. But is it worth a fight, fight to shut the government down, Steve? Well, if, if we look, if we ha we can't continue to borrow a trillion dollars a year. If, yeah, it is worth a fight. You know, I think it I is worth agree. a fight to hold those caps. I, mean, I do. I think we, we've had down. 18 government shutdowns. We've had uh, 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 unlimited amount, uh, 33 wow. continuing resolutions. And, you know, I think the big problem, guys, is that sometimes you've got to have a, a landing and it's got to be hard. Yeah. And all of yeah. this stuff has been done to mask a hard or prevent you know a hard You're landing. Right. You're and right. it just gets worse. Isn't it's that the point? Like, like, yeah, uh, why are we so afraid of one, a hard um, landing? Everyone on Wall Street doesn't get paid when that happens unless they're in cash, long bonds. And by the way, buy some gold right here, too. But the reality <laughs> is that... People can't handle the truth on that front. And in night coming out of the <laughs> same law, the someone truth. was trying to buy a vote. People came out of 1979, out of Jimmy Carter, same kind of bipolar setup where both Republicans and Democrats were really like big money printers and spenters. And then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, Reagan said, you know what, Volcker and I are just going to take you guys out, take the pain. 1981 recession, and then everything was good after that. It was that. a tough period, and then it was a glorious long-term period right. after that. But you had to take your medicine. But what's yeah. the tough period yeah, Charles, now trying to get growth up? How do you get All we need to do without without you get out else? of the way. You get out of the way. The government is not the answer. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah. But one, get out of the way. The government's yeah. been in the way so long. Yeah. People don't know where to go. Yeah. Well, yes, and that's the key point. I think, and we're seeing that through labor participation. Exactly. Right. It's the yeah. lowest level since 1977. Yeah. People have given up. The size of our workforce is shrinking. Now, yeah. that's where I talk about. There's some disconnects here. We're saying we have all these job openings. We need employers, corporations out there to innovate and right. to hire and, and to, to hire. add to their workforce. We need to get the word out there also that there are jobs out there and there's lots of opportunity and people mm -hmm. need to start participating in the workforce again. They're Look not going to do that way, today. Way, Unfortunately, people are going to watch the market and they're going to say, oh my God. And this is really, yeah. you actually and perversely need a crisis to perpetuate some kind of political change. Mm. You want and an it, amazing yeah. statistic. Yeah, 300, 350,000 more people dropped out of the workforce, Maria. I mean, this is this, it's you crazy. know, it's continued so decline. So the participation and rate I, is what? Agree. What is the participation it, rate right now? It's right, 62.4%. Yeah. Wow, even worse. Yeah, it keeps on dropping.